Middle School, The Worst Years of My Life by James Patterson. Chapters 21 and 22. Chapter 21, More Bad News. Leo caught up with me before I got to detention. He'd seen everything. Hey, I've got bad news, he said. I just met the bad news, I told him. Well, there's more. You also just lost a life. Sorry, bud. I stopped right there in the hall. What? No way. What are you talking about? You wussed out on Miller, he said. Yeah, well, I didn't feel like donating any blood today, Leo shrugged. It could have been worth some good points. Section 9, Rule 11, students will not bully, harass, or fight one another anywhere on school property. No fear, I said. Just because I didn't fight him doesn't mean I should lose a life. You never said... I said I'd keep things interesting, Leo told me. You've got your job and I've got mine. Whatever, I said and started walking again. I still didn't lose a life. Yeah, you did, he called after me, and of course I knew he was right. This was unbelievable. First, Miller nearly turned me into lunch meat. And then Leo took away one of the only three lives I had. Could this day get any worse? Yes. Chapter 22, and to top it off. I thought detention was going to be me, Miss Donatello, and whoever else had gotten into trouble that week. But when I got to Donatello's room, she was just sitting there by herself. Ah, uh, you're late, she said. Oh, where is everyone, I said. I asked Mrs. Stricker to take the other students for detention today. I was hoping you and I could just talk. Danger, danger, danger. In case you don't already know, when an adult wants to just talk, it actually means the person wants you to talk. All about the stuff you don't want to talk about. In other words, the dragon lady had set her trap and I'd walked right into it. Have a seat, she tells me. No, I say, you have a seat. My sword rings in the air and I pull it out of its sheath. The dragon lady's eyes turn yellow. A long stream of fire comes shooting out her nose. I dive over a burning desk, roll and jump back onto my feet. Already her tail is whipping out in my direction. Just before it can stab through my ear and into my brain, I clip off the end of it with my sword. Green blood sprays me in the face. She howls in pain. Get back, I yell at her. I can see the fear in those yellow eyes. But she's faking. She pounces again. Wings wide, claws bared, and that razor tail still trying to get inside my head. The flames are everywhere now. The whole room is on fire and the heat is intense. I can smell my own skin starting to burn, but I keep swinging. One, two, one, two, one, two. It's getting harder to move because my sneakers are melting into the floor. Finally, I get her backed into a corner. I raise my sword high and ready to deliver the final death blow just as her wings open again and she rises to the ceiling. She hovers overhead, out of reach of my sword. I swing some more, but it's no good. Of course, her tail can't get me from up there either. I'm starting to think this could go on all night until... All students taking the late bus home should proceed to the boarding area now. And just like that, my first detention was over. I'm disappointed in you, Rafe, Miss Donatello said. You have so much potential. I have to catch the bus, I said. Is it okay if I go? She just sighed and waved me out of the room. I'd survive to be tortured another day, but just like with Miller the Killer, I wasn't sure how much longer I could hold off that dragon lady.